How do we how do we start these off? Our, our, the our spotlight, spotlight episodes? episodes. I don't know. This is my first one. With a big glass of beer, that's how we start it off. Oh god. This smells like an outhouse. <laughs> like a porta john, like oh. a rock concert. Yeah. No porta john. No. And it kind of tastes like you just took the glass right in the right in the oh bottom of it. Grand. At least is what? How much? How much alcohol is in that? Seven, eight. Nine. This is a nine percenter. At least there's that. But one does need a nine percent beer to talk about lichen colony. Segway. That was that was the the longest drawn out segue in wow. the history of this show. Congratulations, Mike. Thank you did it. You. Thank you. You did it. You can't rush Mike. You, get, you just have to let him do it. Uh, yeah, he's gonna yeah. do what he's gonna do. Of course. Do. Of course. I bankrupt a craft brewery at the same time I make up a nice segue. <laughs> <laughs> angel of mine and godspeed be with you on your way all my tears i would cry so we're here to talk about lichen colony um this film appeared in our mail one day as many of the films we've watched do we we all watched this uh, full disclosure, we watched it before. Just for the shits of it, we started watching it with the director commentary, just thinking like, oh, we'll just hear what the director has to say. And we became so enthralled with the director talking about the movie that we started just re-watching the entire movie again with commentary directly after watching it. We needed clarification <laughs> of, of the director's state of mind. Sure. Much like Dave Waskovich, uh, director of Suburban Sasquatch, of which we watched the commentary for that, we needed to find out if this person was insane. You need to know how and why. How, yes, yes, <laughs> we, yes. We learned some hows. I still don't understand why. <laughs> you can't catch me. Can wolves laugh and talk at the same time? Yes, Is that that you, stop, you stop the laughing sound effects the when they're talking. <laughs> <laughs> this should be common sense. Listen, can we, that's not the important part of the scene. Playing and laughing in the graveyard. This is where normal people play and laugh. Say nothing of yourself. Well, since we all saw it uh, before, Josh, this was your first viewing of Lycan Colony. Yeah, I was not at that uh, screening with you guys, yeah. so I went in. First impressions. Uh, or were you all just fucked? <laughs> oh no, it's a ghost! Oh no, it's a bear! Look out! It was... You gonna be alright? Leave me. Get them. What? what? Um... What? Huh? Us, I, here's what I can say with 100% conviction. I've never seen anything like this movie. <laughs> never seen anything like it. I think you can make, you can understand what, Oh yes, you're a fucking wolf, you're a fucking wolf! <laughs> oh yes! <laughs> oh, you're a big strong wolf! <laughs> Just cutting those turds. <laughs> <laughs> for a movie. <laughs> Real quick, the important thing to note is this is the ultimate film. When you think of a movie where someone pictured how it would turn out, as opposed to reality. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because every yeah. scene you watch, like you're, you know the guy's thinking of it in his brain. And it's all much cooler and, and it's all much yes, uh, yes, specifically the part where they're in the bar, they go into the other part of the bar, and there's like supposed to be 10 werewolves like going like this, and they're having like this witty banter back and forth. Like, I never thought this would happen. Yeah, I can't believe what I'm seeing. Just classic delusion of an ex-alcoholic. Some see spies and snakes, some pick elements. Me, I gotta see classic werewolves. And then the man falls through the floor. Figure what? that out. <laughs> Josh, what just happened? <laughs> yeah. You yeah, found Josh. a warp? <laughs> <There's> a, <laughs> yeah. And the guy was thinking of this like amazing like action set piece where there's these wolves everywhere and they're surrounded and there's this like dramatic lighting and the camera's moving around and they're ah. But there's one problem. 
They only have one costume. They only had one costume, and uh, and they don't have a hole for the man to fall through. And it was executed <laughs> the, uh, as poorly as possible. I, ser I seriously, I thought he found a warp, and he just t he tunneled through the his body just phased through the floor. We we ask how and why, and we you know we, we learned a lot about how just the commentary track, but hmm. that's that's one of our theories on the the why though. The reason that this doesn't look like a scary werewolf mask is because this is a movie made by a furry, and that was the mask he wears to the convention that he m***s in in his hotel room. <laughs> Again, this is a theory. <laughs> this is a theory. <laughs> For legal purposes only, this is a theory. But that theory has <laughs> led a great deal of credence by the end of the film, because th that's just a mask, and it's always just a mask with like some kind of yeah. shitty crepe hair like on the arms. Then at the end, <laughs> there's the costume. Yes, the full-bodied costume. Oh, here it is. Oh! Yeah. Uh-huh. That's definitely somebody's furry outfit. <laughs> yeah, that's someone who's going to conventions. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. It doesn't have abs, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's like something Bob Euchre would run into in a lobby in a hotel he doesn't want to be in. Hmm, that reference. What? <laughs> I what? know who Bob Euchre is. You don't know about Bob Euchre and the furries? Never mind. But we get to, we, yeah, we, we get to that costume. That is a full costume. It's like, it's got abs. It's got like the abs are the thing. disturbing part. I think he is a closeted furry. He doesn't. I don't even think he knows it. He just sees himself. He like uh, there's behind the scene features of him building this costume and talking about it. And he put a lot of work into something that looks like a sexualized wolf man. Yeah. Uh, our theory, our other theory about this movie was that his family discovered his first suit. <laughs> And that he had to explain it away like really quickly and awkwardly. Oh, oh no, no, no! It's not what you think, honey. I'm, I'm making a movie. I'm gonna uh, put a, you a, in it. A, a werewolf movie. You're gonna be in it. Mm -hmm. It's all about, it's all about werewolves. And this, this costume that you found dirty and in the basement uh, is for the movie. Uh. Oh, what's, what's the story about? Oh, uh, well, 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 you see, uh, there, there, there was a, a doctor. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. The doctor moves to a town, a town full of werewolves. <laughs> That's good, man. But those werewolves, oh, they're just like you and me, honey. Yeah. You, you seems like you have a lot of practice with weird cover Here we stories. Go. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you seem pretty good at it. Th that's the surface reaction you would get. We did a little research into the, the creator of this film. Uh, I think this was his only film, which is both fortunate and unfortunate. I'm both relieved and sad. <laughs> yes. uh, but he apparently writes werewolf novels. So it is possible he is just a fan of werewolf lore and, and he attempted to make a film and obviously did not have filmmaking skills. But he's got plenty of ideas. He's got ideas and he likes the lore because there's, there's a whole, what, what, with the lichen colony, I guess this will quickly lead into the premise. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a little town in uh, New Hampshire. Yeah, Canisboro, population of 3,761. Yes, and it, and it is all werewolves, and they're all people that live in the town, and they live in the town because the natural water that comes down from the mountain contains trace elements of silver. So if they drink the tap water, it helps them suppress their werewolfism. Uh, and then our hero, Russ, which is the girl. Yeah. Uh, her name is Russ because in the original script it was supposed to be a man and the man didn't show up oh the shoot oh, oh the girl showed up and she was just supposed to be a bar extra and they didn't have anyone to play russ so she played russ i just want to go back and tear zev and his bar a new one shouldn't that solve your problem and they left the name because they didn't feel like changing the script that's it's, fine it sounds like you're joking wasn't that actually in the commentary track i am track? not joking yes. that is true yeah yes uh and then she's there with her brother they're looking for their father who disappeared while hunting. And we get to the important part of all of this, which is they run into who really is the main character of the movie, which is New England Dad. Well, we, we really didn't move here because I had a revelation of being a small town doc instead of the drudgery of the big city of, in politics of suburbia. <laughs> you didn't do it to spend more time with me either, did you? Your father had a drink. Has. has a drinking problem. One day at a time and all that. Come on. <laughs> well, you think he's the main character. The movie starts off with him. Yeah. yeah. Him and, and the son. 
He's the best part of the whole thing. He doesn't give a fuck, but he talks like he's from New England and he's got Boston Charter. Some years ago, I was an army doctor. I've seen that tat before on elite special forces men. A private rites of passage, a tribal ritual amongst a few of them. Uh, yeah, and that's the, the really the narrative arc that we think is going to happen. It's like there's a ton of family drama with him, and he's a drunk, and he killed a lady while doing brain surgery on her. And, and the son so has to deal with being a werewolf now because the son meets the woman who shows up in his room at night, even though it's clearly not really night. night. It's day for night. Well, I, I think if you, if you want to exemplify this whole, the director had a vision, but had no way of even understanding how to execute it, there's one clip that you can show that perfectly exemplifies that, which is the mom looking through the keyhole. The, no. <laughs> no. That's, no. No, but people look through uh, <laughs> the lock. Which is a classic horror movie trope is, you know, back in old Victorian times, I had the keyhole that you could see through. So you, you show someone looking through the keyhole. Uh, they didn't have a keyhole to look through, but it was in the script. Right. To look yes. through a keyhole. Yes. Yes. And so instead of doing something different, the mom <laughs> looks through the doorknob. Yeah. Okay, I had a choice. I missed too many of these. It looks like Lava's position is head bandaid push-up. So, uh, the doctor has to go to AA as part of his... Because uh, he was, because he has to go to AA because he was a brain surgeon that was drunk while doing right. brain surgery, right. and he slipped with a scalpel. Oh wait, covered that. the hospital covered it up right. and relocated him to some podunk town mm -hmm. in order to cover it up. Why would he still have to go to AA? Uh, that was part of his <laughs> having the new job. They covered up the murder, but not the alcoholism. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. I think sure. I just found a plot hole in this movie. Oh. What? what? <laughs> Jack. Which one? D David, our, our, our main werewolf good guy, said that he is childhood friends yeah. with Dr. New oh. England. Yeah. But if he grew, if, if David grew up in Canisboro, how could they be childhood friends? Yes, as the wife says, they had a house in the hills, uh, implying Beverly Hills, California. Somewhere else, uh, yeah. We had a house in the hills, and you were the top, sh top, top, and you were the top notch doctor? We had a beautiful home in the hills when you were the hospital's new hotshot doctor. Top notch doctor? Some surgeon, ha! You're lucky your father. <laughs> <laughs> but then the sponsor and Dr. Fudd say, hey, let's go to the bar to get some coffee and some steaks, which I hear taste pretty good. <laughs> How is it? Awesome. <laughs> oh fuck. He yells awesome so loud it, it clips the audio and it, it drops it out. How is it? Awesome. It's, it's, nah, it's just, it's, it's a masterpiece. But Russ and her brother come in, they, they, as Jay said during the screening, they decide to have food after they come in. We'll take another uh, crack at it, the first slate. Let's get some food, some food and booze. Take a breather. They decided to get food after they got to the restaurant. I guess they just stopped there, parked, got out of the car, walked into a restaurant, sat down, got menus. <laughs> and then decided, and then figured they were hungry. And then said, I guess we should have some dinner. Uh, Dr. Dan notices that the big guy, whatever his name is, has a tattoo on his neck from the military. Yeah. And Dr. Dan was also, yeah, it's, they couldn't take the time to, to draw a little tattoo with a no. pen. And it floats until they freeze the frame of the guy and then the tattoo can stay in the same place. It was it was seamless. Yeah, absolutely. Can we borrow your ketchup? Uh, yeah, take it. Fucking egg ketchup. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. What? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> That was that was in the movie, and it's nowhere near it, and it's beautiful. The, the you know, the, oh, there was an effect. <laughs> I, I, it's hard. Like I, I work in special effects all the time, so like I guess I noticed it. Like it's, oh, he didn't really have a tattoo on his neck. 
Most people wouldn't even see it. I'm I didn't a, notice. You know what I am, Mike? I'm a nitpicker. Okay. That's what right. I am. I guess yeah. it's a little nitpicky. It's a little nitpicky. Because it, to me, it, like, it, I didn't even notice. But the tattoo, if you, if you pay close attention, go frame by frame, doesn't stick perfectly to the yeah. neck. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to nitpick the film, you can nitpick the film. I mean, no one's going to go frame by frame and complain about a tattoo. Okay. It's definitely not what's no happening on the screen right it. now. Yeah. Right. It, it's it goes definitely by not so in the edit. It's really about fast. the story and the characters. Absolutely. And I was into the characters. How it makes you feel. Story. Yeah. So Dr. Dan and David join uh, Russ and her brother, whose name I don't fucking remember, at their table, and they're talking about the kid's dad, who Dr. Yeah, Dan oh, knows. We gotta set up the gold watch. Exactly. So they're talking, and they're like, boy, he's, he's, he's this character, and he's he got that gold watch in the in the service, and remember what it said on it, and the kid's saying he's in blah 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 blip 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 whatever the fuck it say. I remember when he was awarded that gold watch at his retirement, for many years of loyal service. I still remember their inscription. Few are those who rise above the fears that, that rise before, before them. And guess what happens? One se literally one second later. Because the thing is, you're thinking like this is you know it's a clever thing for this a movie is gonna be to set, set up. up for later. Yeah, like maybe Act Two, maybe <laughs> even Act Three. <laughs> I can't but, wait for the anticipation to see how this gets laid off. <laughs> but instead of oh, two or okay, three, yeah, I'll just throw it on the fucking oh my table. God. Few are those who rise above the fears, the fears that rise before, before them. them. Oh, oh, good thing they mentioned so, all this it, right it, now. Whoa! Oh, whoa, oh, 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 what? Found it. Ah, my watch! What? <laughs> <laughs> and it's, you know, freeze frame again on this um, poorly framed watch that has a terribly put effect of the description You know what, I, on. I appreciate the freeze frame instead of trying to motion track the letters. I, I, at least I can read it. You can barely tell. You can barely <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's barely a movie. <laughs> it's wolfly a movie. Oh, cause bear? Yeah, I. I wow. You should just, just pick anything I'm, that lives I'm in the wood and you think that's gonna be a pun? Bottom of the barrel. <laughs> the wolf roll. The wolf roll. <laughs> <laughs> My, the pun center of my brain was operated on by Dr. Dan. There it is. <laughs> if only this were a bear movie. Yeah. You'd be fine, you'd be golden. All my puns would be unbearable. <laughs> Mike, let me pause you for a second. Pause? So we can continue talking about the wolf movie. That's, I thought that was a better one. At least that one was appropriate. Yeah, I thought that, yeah. It took me a while to think of it while Mike was blathering. Um, like in colony? Because it's shitty? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got him with that one. You got him. See, I... <laughs> wow. I always got a secret weapon up my sleeve. <laughs> that one worked. Wow. <laughs> As I give that pun a K9 out of 10. <laughs> Fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> That's when basically you're supposed to find out with everybody else that everybody in town is a werewolf yeah. and the werewolves are there and that is expressed in one simple word and that is mistake <laughs> mistake <laughs> 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 the weirdest fucking delivery. <laughs> I'm just like, this is supposed to be such the key word, the key just like, oh, this is the this is the hinge of act one. Like this is when you find out the movie. Mistake! Mistake! I'm afraid you signed a contract to film this for another three months. Mistake! <laughs> Mistake! Yeah. So we discover, uh, I guess uh, Peter Mayhew guy, guy is, is our lead villain. Uh, David is like, we're just normal people. We grow crops, we, we eat cows, we, we, you know, we don't. But Zeb, Zeb murders people, keeps them in the freezer, and serves them up a steak. How is it? Awesome. Uh, I, I think like a special just overall mention needs to be uh, made for the day tonight. Day for night, yeah. Uh, if you don't have any idea what that means, 
It means when you shoot during the day and you try to make it look like night in post-production somehow, whether it's tinting the screen blue or making the exposure so low that you can't tell what's happening. <laughs> and if, if you watch uh, Red Letter Media for like filmmaking tips and advice, that's the one lesson you come away from with this episode. Don't shoot day for night. Yes. Ever. 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 It won't look good and you can't do it. Why not, Blazing. Just, why not just write it so that this happens during the daytime? <laughs> Worst case scenario, get a, get a light, plug it in and shoot it in the woods, turn on your smoke machine, it'll look like garbage. Or, as we've known from all of our films, but, you either, but either it's actually... better than doing day for night. But they shoot, they shoot interiors here. They're still doing day for night. I know. They don't have to, it's indoors. <laughs> right. That's that's the that's the, it went it went that far. It went so far. It's it's it, it gets it, it it gets impossible to tell. The movie has temporal issues because you never really know what time it is because nothing lines up anyway and the scenes are I mean like seriously in the first bar it's night and then they're in the basement and then they go up into the second bar and it's full day. And then he goes down into the basement again and comes out of the basement and it's dusky. I, I wouldn't put it past this movie to do night for day. <laughs> <laughs> Russ gets thrown through the window, which is another wonderful uh, oh. uh, effect there. When Russ gets thrown through the window. She jumps through the window. It's, I, it's, She's trying to escape the werewolf. Uh-huh. Ah! See, now I'm not surprised. Ah! Wait a minute. I'm more surprised it's actually night. <laughs> oh, look at that. When Russ in, goes through the window. In an I awesome fucking, action yeah. sequence, she is overrun by the, the enormous ones of werewolves. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously? Fuck. <laughs> and so her only option is to heroically burst through the giant plate glass window where it is night. Outside, oh, yeah. it's night. It's actual it's night. Actual yeah. night. Yeah. It's so weird, isn't it? This movie would confuse when you. You see, wood. actual night, it's confusing. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. But he would watch Lycan Colony and he would say, is this day or night? He'd say, that's not my fetish. <laughs> <laughs> I wear women's underwear. I thought that was weird. <laughs> you dress up like a werewolf and get f***ed. <laughs> so everybody that matters in this movie, apart from the bad guys, get back to Dr. Dan's house and where they all find out this is when all the exposition happens in a, a, a off-camera cue card way, yes. which we can actually see <laughs> off. With some hilarious mispronunciations. Yes, there are several of <laughs> And this I'm film. Rich Evans. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking damn Amish can do it. Why can't us? I've been undercover for months, trying to imitate Zed's pack. I'm sorry, to answer your question, yes, we're allergic to silver, but in its purest form. But in small amounts, it can have Municipal purposes. This is where we learn all about the werewolf lore. This is where the director and the writer, Rob Roy, was just really stroking it, having a great time. They, uh, they come from uh, an ancient... Uh, are you telling me he wasn't? Well, we find out when David is doing all his spiel is like how they, this is how they live. And like, we're definitely normal werewolves and we call you norms because we really love cheers. Yeah, by using innocent people as your cattle. No, I had no idea what happened at Zep's bar. We grow crops, raise cattle, sheep, same as your norms. Norms? Sorry, it's just a slang term we use with people. What do you think eat. it means? It's <laughs> 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 context clues. <laughs> Oh, and I suppose, you know, the other important part of this scene is that the son, who we've been hanging out with occasionally, has now turned into a werewolf. Mm. An adorable werewolf. Who says mom through his mask. They call him a pup. It's 
because he's yeah, he's a pup. It's yeah. awkward. It's it's, creepy. it's really awkward. It's, it's a little creepy. Yeah. yeah. Then we get that that there's the dream sequence uh, for no reason at all. It Dr. just cuts Dan, right to it. Doctor Dan nods off during the exposition dump, and there you is. You don't see him nod off though. It's just all of a sudden yeah. there's a cut. Yeah. It's and meant then, to shock you. Like, yeah. Now let's see what gear you have packed away in that car of yours. I hope you are all hungry. I'm famished. Mm. <laughs> um, are those supposed to be his ribs? Yep. Yeah. Uh huh. Yep. Definitely. Yep. Eat me before I eat you. Yeah. The the I think it's is it the kid who's on the table and they're eating him or no? It's Doctor Dan. Oh, it's Doctor Dan. Um. Then they're like devouring his flesh, and they're like, and then and then there's like. Uh, uh, a 15-minute-long sequence where Russ is like going, like licking her fingers, and going, oh, what? and it, and it's incredibly awkward. Is Rob Roy into cannibal porn? <laughs> it's my alias. Oh. <laughs> it's clearly not a real name. I let you watch this movie because I'm also into embarrassment. <laughs> Rich. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, makes fun of my movie. <laughs> That explains so much, Rich. That explains so much about this show, about everything. Okay. To be fair, though, I, I actually I actually felt embarrassment for the people who made this movie. I really oh, did. did. That seldom happens. I'm usually fine laughing at other people, but this time I actually felt genuine embarrassment for the filmmakers. Yeah. But it, what the fuck? <laughs> 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 What's burning. going on with this crotch? <laughs> What's that big, big protrusion <laughs> coming out of the crotch area? It does a few things right, but not very much. What other things does it do right? <laughs> oh, you know what it did right? You know what it did right? <laughs> what? Is the, that one shot, even though it lasted too oh, long, yeah. of the creepy shadow creeping down the stairs when oh, the mom right. was sleeping. Yeah. That was like the one really nice shot. It's so good, it's on the back. Cool. Jay compared it to a uh, David Lynch film, and... Uh... This looks like a shot that would be in, like, Inland Empire. If there was, and that yeah. happened, and that happened, it really happened. Yeah. Although you did make a, also make an Eraserhead comment too. I did. So, so like in Colony is as good as David Lynch films. I think. I think that is the conclusion we draw. <laughs> Uh, David and Russ go off to meet the witch. They're walking in and then uh, the witch is playing with some alpacas and then she shoots Russ with her fart gun. And then they get back up and like, hey, don't shoot me with your fart gun, I'm your friend. And then they go up and uh, the witch is super flirty with David and sticks her tongue in his ear, which is how they learn things. It, it, it was like a clever little character thing where they're like, this witch Oh is yeah. Oh. oh yeah! Oh. It's happening again. Rich, do you know what a meme is? Because he just made one. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. I think I think the tongue in the ear is like the the like the Vulcan mind meld equivalent. Yeah. Like I just yeah. see, I, I I got all the plot. You didn't have to to tell it to me. Which thank you okay. movie. That Great. was some. That was actually like some. Even though it was weird, it was clever showing not telling. Yes. We understood yeah, sure. what was happening yeah. without them having to go into... It was another surprising. Thing the movie got right. She learns everything that's going on so far, and then she has another giant exposition dump, which she does through her eyes, directly at the camera. Oh, hi. Wow. Uh, can we help you? It's like, why are you still rolling? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> I don't know. Why is this happening? Uh, um, <laughs> what is this? And then zoom in, and then hello, audience. She explains where werewolves came from. Yes. Via That's animated what... cave paintings. Yeah, it, got, it, it turned into a 1990 episode of Liquid TV for a while. They had gone days without food. One of them had been badly injured from a bear they had cornered, but got away. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, we're set up for a final confrontation. Yes. Russ and uh, David go into the woods mm -hmm. to hunt down Peter Mayhew. And uh, David has jumping powers, not unlike, 
like Mario or mm -hmm. Luigi. Mm -hmm. And you're cutting me into bits and bits and separate them far enough from each other so I'll never piece them together. Okay? Glad you remember. Let's go. <laughs> and uh, he goes and does uh, a, a homoerotic pooping trance where he's naked and, and crapping <laughs> in front of in front of like and from, hovering yeah. eyes and and in, in, all in, a, in red experimental uh, student uh, film yeah and he's like I don't know what he's doing he's he's building himself up so that he could jump in front of a bullet later yes well he got to show off his thing he got it you know he's he's working for that like good for him there you're talking about him taking a dump on camera. <laughs> He was trying to remain under control because remember, this is the fall equinox. He goes, you know, we'll go to the harvest moon. They're stronger, but they'll be dumber. Okay, I missed yeah. that. Is that why they chained the sun to the bed and yeah. gave yes. him tranquilizers? Yep. So he was meditating to keep his cognitive ability. Stuart, where did you get those? Uh, never mind, I don't want to know. How did he know he had them? <laughs> uh, that's, 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 that's a whole other nah, story. Never mind. <laughs> so after all that bullshit, we cut back to Russ, and she is getting attacked by the one or two werewolves that are wandering around at that point. Yes. And yeah, she's shooting them yes. multiple times the with the gun. Best action scene of all time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh my god. Oh my Holy god! Shit. <laughs> Look, they're editing in real time. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. What is are bound to happen? What the fuck is. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's not even in camera editing, it's just it's editing in real time. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> so loud. And then there's the one where she <laughs> rips out his heart. And is making it pump with their hand and yells hairy motherfucker at him. Hairy motherfucker. <laughs> Alright, that's a solid line. It is. Yeah. Hairy motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> Now, ten more times! <laughs> Harry motherfucker! Keep saying it. Here's, here's the curious thing, though, about yeah. the, the end of this movie. There are scenes where they're actually outdoors, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Why do they intermix that with blue screen shit? Mm -hmm. Why? why they, they obviously had these actors add access to the outdoors at some point. There are many answers to this question, Rich. Do you have Can I have one of them? Oh, well, uh, well, okay. One of them is they filmed for a day. And then the actors refused to show up any more days. <laughs> uh, the other day, the other answer is it. it Not going back out to the woods. It rained the next day. Oh. And and it, he couldn't think. Well, I'll shoot it next week when it dries out. It rained the next day. I guess I got to shoot it on a blue screen, right? He only had one week off of work. Yes. He had to fit everything in. Right. Sure. So the, so, pick the dumbest answer, and that's most likely <laughs> what happened, right? All right. Given all the other ADR in the movie, why during the, the blue screen shots are they clearly shooting on set audio? So there shouldn't be any other packs with them. If you encounter any other packs along the way, don't harm them. And on top of that, why aren't they ADRing the guy, the big muscle guy who has the mask on? How the fuck did that happen? Why couldn't he go out with a camera later? Like, maybe he had to film the actress on a blue screen, he couldn't get Russ back. But why couldn't he go out on his own later and get other shots of the woods to put in the background rather than the one? And why was the one shot of the woods slightly motion blurred <laughs> as if taken as a screen grab from a, uh, it was a quick pan. Of the <laughs> That's a damn good question. Yeah, you go out with a nice camera, a still camera, and take some high resolution pictures of the woods. I'm only going out to the woods once. Uh, the big muscly guy you mentioned, by the way, is her brother, who died earlier, but now has come back as a werewolf. Right. He gets his throat slit 
by Peter Mayhew. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, Dr. Dan performs surgery on it by putting his, his dinner napkin on his neck that gets soaked in blood. <laughs> and then after he passes away, he, he covers the corpse with his, his greasy dinner napkin <laughs> soaked in blood. Well, well, Dr. Dan is thinking, well, this guy is obviously a goner, but I, I'm a doctor. I got to look like I'm trying to do something. I put a napkin on it. I mean, a lot of the end fight will just be showing clips of how awkward and terrible all of the action is. And that's kind of where we are. The green screen is there. There's one section of green screen where there was a hole in the green screen. And so part of the forest is flapping open just horrible, all horrible, none as inexplicable as the cartoon furry bad guy. It doesn't look like a werewolf. It looks like a mascot at an amateur league baseball game. <laughs> it's just the worst, but it's our main villain. Oh yeah, and then you shock him. Yeah, then you shock the wolf. Just shake, just shake a bunch in that costume. Oh, she's floating above the ground. <laughs> well, she's a well, witch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're talking about a man, right? He had access to a blue screen. He could have positioned his actors however he wanted, yet he chose to film a conversation between two characters. Their backs were to the camera. Wait, their backs were to the camera. And instead of cutting between the two of them, he would just fade out between different lines of the script because presumably, they couldn't remember the lines, and every time they had a line, they would look at the script, put it down, and and, and say it. It's weird because the film is clearly edited. Yeah. Uh, okay. But at the same time, it's not edited. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's really like it's hard assembled. to wrap. It's assembled. It's assembled. It's hard to wrap your brain around what happened. Rob Roy did not have the necessary hardware to edit this film. He had to rent out the computer. But but he could only rent the computer for 90 minutes, so he had to edit the movie in real time. It's possible. Yeah. And that's the only way that can happen. The the like the 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 little thing is going in real time, and he's like, and there's like frames fade, of black. Just, that fade, just, fade, just, out, go just by. fade out. Just fade out. He has like a live mixer, like yeah. like a yeah, video like toaster. Actual, yeah. Like fade out. A cut there. Uh, that that line's good. Okay, ADR. Stamp it in. Yeah. It's literally like. yeah. There's actually quite an accomplishment. It's very impressive. <laughs> and yeah, just eventually the the witch is there. And, and she then, fart fights the. Yes. She little, casts it, brown gas. She does. And then the wolf like. Uh, uh, Peter Mayhew with the wolf attacks her and she cartoon rolls halfway up the screen. Make that angel, angel smile stay. <laughs> How do you do that? How do you put that in your movie and say this is acceptable? <laughs> Like she starts off she like falls off bottom, the blue screen. Yeah, the bottom of the screen is here. She starts here and rolls up. <laughs> oh. Wow. Well that's mm. What kind of movie are you guys uh, making? Three way. Hold up. What kind of movie are you making? Are you making a porno? There's no way this movie wasn't a weird sex thing. That's where it crosses the line into Oh, he's masturbating. Yeah, that's right. the scene that really locked it in. He was in, he was nominated in one of the new Oscar categories <laughs> called furiously masturbating for 90 minutes while live editing a motion picture. <laughs> oh. They withdrew it. They withdrew that category, right. particular category. For he was the only entrant. No, Brett Ratner took it every oh. year. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, you killed Mike. That, that is apropos. Yeah. It is. <laughs> it's like if, you, if, if, if that's not coming over the mics, we really should be dubbing that on. <laughs> Even the crickets board. Oh boy. For, for those who can't hear, there is an actual cricket. There's an there, actual man. cricket. Cricket noises. Uh, during all of our jokes tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me feel good, right? 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 Yeah. You know, right in the heart. Yeah, yeah. Hey, man, sound. Uh, I think yeah. some of them are there. Here's, I think, an appropriate question to end this on. Yeah. Does this dethrone Curse of the Wolf as the most awesome werewolf movie we've mm. watched? Oh. Oh, boy. They're really two different animals. <laughs> if you go on Amazon, 
It's listed as unavailable, mm. and there are two reviews, and both are horrifically negative. You think? <laughs> Just, just uh, uh, you know, not Lee John. So I figured Rob Roy would have left himself one good review. <laughs> he couldn't even bring himself to do it. No, no. He did leave himself a review, but it was a bad one. <laughs> oh, I was just thinking, I was thinking he got to the computer, but he got distracted. <laughs> he knows what he's talking about. I hate you so he, much. He goes to the Google bar and types in wolf and then it auto fills the rest. Yeah. <laughs> Use your you imagination. Yeah. Honey, something weird happened when I went to go Google a wool sweater. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, it must be a virus. It must be a virus. <laughs> I typed in W. Oh. <laughs> if you can get a copy of Lichen Colony. It's worth it. It's worth it. Lichen Colony is fascinating on almost every level. Mm -hmm. If we were to sum up Lichen Colony in one word, it would be... Tour de Farce. It said one word. I was, I was, I was going to say, like, awesome. Awesome. Awesome or, or mistake. Or mistake, yeah. like the words that the we have fun of oh. using. Yeah, 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 yeah. I guess it could have made a reference to. Yeah, I mean, he was song. he was trying to set you up for that. Oh, I like to use a clip from the bad movie. Yeah, it was it was really obvious what he was doing. And I thought Rob Roy was embarrassing. Uh, uh, how about how about how about that scene in the in, 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 in the woods? When the werewolf started jumping, then the girl was trying to climb after him. And it was like they did the joke in reverse, because you want to set up the girl climbing, and then the wolf jumps good, and then it's fun funny. It, is it more or less awkward if I leave too? I think it's more awkward if I leave too. Hello? Hello, I can't see! I'm... Ow! I'm tripping! Ow. I can't see where I'm going! 